Hi, good morning. Um, just coming up to 10 o'clock in the UK on the 15th of December. And I'm going to basically review the markets that I looked at yesterday because that's fortunately where all the action was. Uh, currency markets not doing a whole lot so far this week. Kind of feels like they're getting into holiday mode already, into Christmas holiday mode. But stock markets certainly moving around, gold certainly moving around. So I had this resistance level in gold up around the high 1780 area, 17 sort of 86 up to 1789. Um, but it's been working really well, entering short positions up there. Yesterday's high was in fact 1789. So no excuse. Uh, well, certainly easy to enter a short position if that's what you were looking to do. And as you can see, we were really helped by a, a, a high inflation number yesterday coming out of the US. As you know, as I've said for days and weeks and months, uh, gold is not a he an inflation hedge like everyone seems to think it is. Um, or I, I don't believe it will act as so uh, at the moment, at least. Maybe if inflation goes absolutely rampant. But at this stage, when it looks like there's going to be tapering and higher interest rates, um, gold is getting a, a bit of a beating uh, as expected. So gold down to 1766 yesterday. And I think it will continue to go lower. You can see the moving averages on the daily chart doing their job along with the 23.6% FIB uh, doing their job as resistance. Now, we've been oversold for a while. We managed to just climb out of oversold territory on the slow stochastic, but looks like we will probably be heading lower and back into oversold territory. But when a market is trending lower, it doesn't really matter how oversold you get. Just flicking over to the four hour chart, you can see we're holding below all the moving averages on the four hour chart. And if I scrunch up the daily chart, you can also see how we're just holding in the middle of that wedge pattern, which I've talked about for obviously quite a long time. And a, and a break below 1760 should send us on the next leg lower. And I personally think that there is a strong chance of that happening. I certainly think there is more likelihood of us breaking below 1760 than breaking above 1790. Of course, the odds are in my favor now with us trading at 1770. Let's have a look at stock markets. So just to recap, the Euro stocks 50. Now, not a market I cover very often, but actually this is a really good market to trade technically. Uh, the levels do tend to hold quite nicely. So Euro stocks been in a, a really good up move of late, like most stock markets. And I'm going to do a little bit of a drawing on here just to highlight what I talked about yesterday, uh, just to clarify. So, oops, that's not working, is it? I need to do my pen. Here we go. So this could be what I believe is a left shoulder, and this could be what I believe is a head form already formed, and then this could be, even though it's a lot smaller, it could be the right shoulder to a head and shoulders pattern. Now, uh, as I've explained, the shoulders don't have to be level, but they pretty much are here. They don't also have to be as wide as each other, the shoulders, so this doesn't have to be a mirror image. Uh, this shoulder obviously basically it extends kind of this width, I, I guess I would say. But this shoulder could be as short as this. Uh, or even shorter, in fact, if it were to break low this week. Whoops, that's a bit of a wonky arrow, but you get the picture. So there you are on the daily chart. That is what I'm thinking. And of course, if we break the neckline, if we do head down here, test the neckline. And then if that breaks, we are looking for a quite a significant move to the downside to complete the measured target for the head and shoulders pattern, which I'll go into uh, as and when that happens. But certainly for the time being, I've talked about this head and shoulders pattern for quite a long time in my reports. So if you're a subscriber, then you might have been following this for quite a few, uh, a number of days or even a week or two. Uh, <clears throat> but um, if you are following this uh, on one of my social media channels, then maybe this is news to you. Okay. Let's move on to the next market. FTSE 100, or the UK 100, um, potential double top here. We have the same sort of situation in the E-mini S&P, although the E-mini S&P is a little bit more pronounced. This one's not quite such a, a strong, hang on, I'm gonna do a line here, there we go. Not such a strong candidate for a double top, but you can see pretty level. I would have wanted to see a big bearish negative candle on there uh, to give me more uh, faith in the fact that it's a double top. A double top doesn't actually complete until it breaks the neck of the double top. So really you've got to see a break of 69.70 to confirm a move 
and then the measured target will be this distance here, which I will try and figure out is, there you go, boom. So that, that would be, I don't know, roughly speaking down here. I'm not, I'm not going to measure it right now, but if you're interested, you can have a look at your charts and you can figure out what the exact target is. But that would be the initial target for the double top. Now it could go a lot lower, but that would be the initial target. This isn't a big double top. It only spans approximately, hang on, let me get this drawing off. Let's see, the high for the, the peak is at 73.98, the low is at 69.69, so what did I say, 73? Okay, so we're, we're looking at something like 400 and something points to the downside if it breaks 69.70, so quite a significant move, certainly, um, but not necessarily a crash that some people are talking about. Okay, that is the, is that's not all the European markets, I think we should also look at the German market, the Germany 40, see if there's any patterns on there. And of course, as I mentioned yesterday, a potential head and shoulders pattern. One of two of you wanted me to sort of give a bit more clarity on that, which I will do now. There we go. So I would suggest that this is the left shoulder, this is the head, and this is the right shoulder. Excuse my phone pinging. Uh, let me turn the sound off. Um, and again, neckline here, and then the measured target would be from the from the head up here to the neck down there. So that would be somewhere down here. We'll measure that another day. So these patterns are developing nicely, um, as I had expected. Candles, individual candles, nothing really much to report. You can see that the moving averages are kind of flattening out. I can't really call this a particularly strong moving average crossover. The 50s crossed below the 100 day moving average, which in theory is a negative signal, but um, you know, you can see really they're just flatlining because of course, well look, look, the DAX now where we are is trading exactly uh, where we were in the middle of April. So we really have in effect just gone sideways, but through this sideways uh, movement, we could be building a negative pattern anyway. Right, uh, on to the next market. Pop over to the US now. I talked about potential double top yesterday. I like the fact, let's blow this up. I like the fact that we've got big negative candles. Hang on, what's going on here? I like the fact that we've got big negative candles. Why is this not working? That's what I'm looking for. I like the fact that we've got big negative candles on these peaks. So that's a kind of shooting star. And then we've got a bearish engulfing candle followed by another big red candle giving me more confidence that this is actually a double top. Now, as I've already mentioned, a double top pattern does not complete until the neckline is broken, and that will be here at around 4,500 for the cash index. This is not a futures contract that I'm looking at at the moment. This is the cash index. So 4,500, a break of that, would also break the 100-day moving average, which is around 25 points higher at the moment. 50-day 50 50 day moving average, obviously just holding but I wonder how long that will hold for. Uh, I talked also recently about how increased volatility can give a little bit of a leading in indication that the stock markets could be turning. Now, there's not been a, prolong a, long enough, a prolonged enough period of volatility for me to start calling a major move to the downside, but this is the way downside moves or corrections or bear markets or even crashes start. You get these uh, bit of volatility, you get bearish engulfing candles, you start to get some negative, small negative patterns, which then build into bigger negative patterns. Um, this double top, for example, could be the uh, head to a head and shoulders pattern. So it's entirely possible that this is what we're witnessing. Here's your, here's your uh, right shoulder, uh, left shoulder. This could be a head, which incorporates a double top, which in itself is a negative pattern. And then we will go on to build a right shoulder here and the neckline will be say for example something like that and then when we break 4300 we'll get a sell signal i'm jumping the gun but this i've been doing this 34 years i've, I've witnessed a lot of crashes and this is the way they develop so if this is could be really interesting time in the days and weeks ahead to see if a pattern does develop and that could be something that would bring the market down by let me see that could bring the market down by another 400 points. So we could be looking at a 20% correction 
this you know, this could be the start of a 20% correction in the, in the S&P. It's entirely possible. Obviously, I will keep you posted in the days, weeks and months ahead, and we'll see how that pattern develops. NASDAQ, there's no particular pattern at the moment, but again, I would wonder, is it is it possible that, that we are building a head and shoulders pattern? Could it be that this is a big uh, left shoulder? Could it be that this is going to be the head? And then obviously, could we then form a right shoulder and maybe have a neckline, some, something like this? I don't know. I'm just guessing, obviously. I don't know how low the next trough will be, but it's entirely possible that that will happen. Clearly, I'm jumping the gun. I'm speculating. There is no indication that's going to happen yet. I would at least need to see the market dip down here and then bounce off and fail somewhere around here. And then we, I can be talking a bit more confidently about the pattern forming. But just got a feeling that this might be what is, what is ahead of us because, um, you know, things are hotting up. Inflation's hotting up. Obviously, the COVID situation hasn't gone away. Uh, we, will, we will see. There's still a lot of bulls out there, which is good. When everyone's bearish, the market doesn't go down. The market only goes down when um, when there's a lot of bulls uh, bulls out there uh, who still think the market's going up and everyone's along. Right then, the panic comes in. Right, last one, Dow Jones. Uh, this certainly could be a head and shoulders pattern, and it will be a real nice one. It's quite a big one, so that could lead to quite significant moves to the downside. Again, you get the picture. There's your left shoulder. There's your head and just cut the head off there and then could this be the formation of the right shoulder perhaps we'll do something like this jump around a little bit let the bulls and bears fight it out bears finally get a bit of control hit test the test the support line maybe even bounce a little bit and then boom down and then there's your completion of your head and shoulders pattern and then you are looking at a break of something like let me just have a look get my crosshairs uh, a peak of 36,600 call it a low of 33,000. Okay, so you're, you're looking at something in the region of, um, uh, what's that, two and a half thousand points, two, two and a half thousand extra points off, um, if, my, if my math is correct, uh, down to 34,000, isn't it? So um, that could be quite interesting. Definitely something to watch. Keep in touch. Uh, make sure you watch my videos every day so we can keep abreast of developments on these stock markets. Really could be crucial times after such a bull trend is this now the peaks that we are witnessing developing. I'm really going to be focused on this in the days and weeks ahead. So um, uh, stay tuned. Please do, uh, if you're following this on YouTube, then please do like and share and subscribe.